that they kept moving forward because they were so determined to stop Donald Trump from becoming president. That is damning. Even when a trusted source came forward and said that it looked like a lie that was being fed to them by the Clinton campaign, what did they do? They kept going, kept lying to the American people. What's worse is that they basically got away with it. Hey everybody, I hope that you had a great week. As always, I'm here with some updates on what's happened in Washington, D.C. We've got plenty to talk about from the Durham report to the fentanyl epidemic, so let's get started. This week, after years of wild accusations about President Trump's involvement with Russians, we finally have a conclusion to the whole Russian hoax idea. There was no collusion. John Durham finally released his report, and it was damning. To put it mildly, he found that under James Comey, the FBI failed to uphold fidelity to the law. On top of that, he found that there was no evidence that led the FBI to begin the investigation at all, and yet they kept moving forward because they were so determined to stop Donald Trump from becoming president. That is damning. Even when a trusted source came forward and said that it looked like a lie that was being fed to them by the Clinton campaign. What did they do? They kept going, kept lying to the American people. What's worse is that they basically got away with it. There were no consequences in 2016. It's clear that they felt so emboldened by what they had already done that in 2020, they did the same thing again. That time, it was 51 intelligence agents signing a letter to suppress the Hunter Biden laptop story while the FBI was meeting with big tech to make sure that they stopped the story online. That's what they did to the American people. That is the campaign, the Democrat campaign arm in collusion with paid government workers. Time and time again, Democrats have weaponized the federal government. And if we don't take action now, there's no doubt that they will try to do it again in the presidential election in 2024. Congress has been taking a serious look at this since Republicans took control of the House of Representatives, specifically with a committee on the weaponization of government, looking at the politicization of the FBI, use of appropriations as leverage. That's what I'll be fighting for in the House. I'm confident that many of my Republican colleagues will be joining me in that necessary fight to protect the American people from collusion between the Democrat Party and paid government law enforcement personnel. Think about how scary that is. I want to talk about something else. This week, House Foreign Affairs Committee debated a number of bills, including one that's intended to address the fentanyl epidemic in our country. Now, last week, Title 42 officially ended. And the situation on our southern border is going to get even worse as it has done in the last week. That means more drugs flowing through our communities. Make no mistake, fentanyl is not originating in Mexico. It's coming out of China. That's why we considered HR 3205, which would help address America's fentanyl epidemic by adding fentanyl to the Chemical Weapons Convention, working with the Mexican government to disrupt fentanyl supply chains, countering Chinese fentanyl operations in Mexico, and taking significant steps to strengthen global law enforcement cooperation and U.S. sanctions against synthetic drug trafficking. Now, synthetic opioids, primarily fentanyl, were responsible for the deaths of 70 plus thousand Americans in 2021. And almost daily, thousands of pounds of this drug are seized, enough to kill entire neighborhoods, cities, states. That's the kind of quantity that's coming across our border. It is an epidemic, plain and simple. Speaking of the fentanyl epidemic, law enforcement is on the front lines of this fight, whether on the southern border, whether in our communities. And this week, we recognize the incredible work that they do with National Police Week. Many of our law enforcement officers up here in Washington, D.C., I had the chance to visit with them, tour the Capitol with them. I want to thank every member of our law enforcement for doing their part to keep our communities safe. Couldn't be more proud of you all. I know it's not an easy job. It's not been easy in the last few years. Unfortunately, there's still some in Congress who refuse to back 
our men and women in blue. In fact, earlier this week, two members of the squad actually voted against a resolution simply recognizing National Police Week. It's clear that the defund police movement is sadly alive and well, but I'll keep working to make sure that local agencies have the resources and the support they need, that our men and women, our sheriff's department employees, our police department employees, those that are working to protect our community, they have what they need. That's why I voted in support of the Police Act of 2023. This would make assaulting a law enforcement officer a deportable offense. It should be anyways. So many of these things should simply be deportable offenses, but under this administration, we clearly need to make that an act of Congress to get it done. There's been too many cases of illegal migrants assaulting those who work every day to protect our community, real Americans. This bill sends a clear message that that won't be tolerated and that Congress will stand with our police officers, not illegal immigrants. Now, I'm proud to back the blue. I'm gonna to continue to have your six in Washington in that. I hope you all have a great weekend. It's always an honor to be able to represent you here in Washington. I thank all of our law enforcement officers again for everything you do every single day. Couldn't have been more proud to stand next to you here in Washington. Wish you all the best. You all take care. Hey everyone, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe. I will be back on YouTube with more exclusive content, so stay tuned.